All right, here are 101 Ableton tips. I'm going to do this on a Mac. So if you've got a PC, just substitute the command key with the control key. All right, here we go. Cut, copy, and paste, just as you would expect. Select command C, command V. If you want to duplicate your selected area, command D. If you want to undo anything, command Z. As far as duplication, you could duplicate anything. You can duplicate an effect and then drag it to an, another track. You could duplicate a track. You could duplicate a collection of tracks. So duplication is a very powerful and much used tool. Command A will select all. If you want to select all your warp markers, or if you want to select all your clips, the idea is just to select one of whatever it is you want all of, and then hit all. And as you see, I selected all tracks. If you're playing several clips, hitting Command, Shift, and I will create a new scene with those playing clips on one scene. The tab key switches between the arrange window and the session window. You can select several tracks at the same time and affect all of them at the same time. When playing a clip, you might find it frustrating when the cursor runs off of the screen where you can no longer see it. In that case, you hit the command F and the cursor will always remain in the middle of the screen. Command F again will toggle back. Side chaining is pretty straightforward. You simply drag a compressor into the track that you want to side chain the effect, click the arrow, hit side chain, and then you will create your input normally from something that's running a kick drum. So in this case I have this track here that's got a kick drum and this MIDI part with the kicks running. Play the tracks, bring the compressor down, adjust the release, turn up the ratio, turn off the track. You can also create a sidechain effect without a compressor. Simply uh, go to the clip properties here and you're going to click on volume, unlinked, and then you're going to want to set your loop point to a quarter note. and then set a volume slope, go in low to high. Sometimes I like to give it a little bit of bite right in the beginning, which is a little bit more like a compressor works. And then when you play your part, to save on CPU, you can freeze the track by simply right clicking going to freeze track. Once your track is frozen, you can still cut, copy, paste, delete, and change the volume parameters, uh, but you no longer have the ability to change your effects parameters until you unfreeze, reassign your effects, and then refreeze. A quick way to get your MIDI parts to audio is to right click on your MIDI clip, freeze the track, and then simply copy and paste your clip, and the frozen clip becomes audio. Down here in the corner, you'll notice your resolution in bars or beats. You can simply change that resolution 
by hitting Command-1 to half the time of the resolution, Command-B to double the time. If the resolution is less than one bar, you can hit Command-3 to get the triplet version. Command-4 will take the grid off completely so you can drag freely. Whatever your grid is on is what you will drag to. Command-B will turn on and off the pencil tool. Hitting the headphone icon when you're in your browser menu to have the ability to listen to and preview your audio files before you use them simply hit the headphone icon here highlighting a section and hitting command L will create a loop since different frequencies represent different notes on a keyboard it's possible for you to tune your drums by EQ using a very high Q and sweeping the frequency. It's also possible to retune your drums using the frequency shifter. You could simply use the fine tuning to dial in. Or work with the frequency. Also notice when I hit the little arrow key here, it will put my adjustment back to zero. That works on any knob, also on your pans. If you want to move something back to center, just simply hit the little arrow key. Ableton's default template comes with two send return tracks. If you don't see them, you just hit the S and the R here and they will open up. For every return track you have here, you will have a new send. So if I go ahead and add a new return track, that will also respond here with an extra send. Drop an effect on the return track. And that effect will now be available on all your tracks. Step recording can be done by hitting your headphone icon, holding the note key, I'll hold several here to show you, and hit the right arrow. You can continue to hit the right arrow. You can make it longer or short, shorter depending on your resolution. And you could continue to change notes. When you are not holding down an arrow key, you can move forward in the grid with this orange line and then whatever you hit will be recorded. If you plan to do a consecutive number of the, the same resolution in a row, step recording is probably not the best approach. Better approach is to just enter one note, highlight that, and hit your command D and duplicate it. A simple trick that uh, some non-musicians can use here in Ableton is to look up certain uh, key scales on the internet or what have you and then enter those keys in in the octaves that you want to work in. So I'm not entering any particular scale, but pop in the notes in the scale you want to work in, hit Control A, and then select your uh, left arrow key. You put them behind the loop and then you go ahead and hit Fold. And now the only notes that are going to be available for you to enter are going to be the correct notes in that scale. Here's a couple warping shortcuts. If you simply click and move, it will move your warp marker uh, in the resolution that you have set here. If you hit the Alt key, you no longer have any resolution. You can move in between the grid. If you hit the Shift key and move, you can actually move what part of the audio is going to fall right on the warp marker, get in close here, dial it right in. You could select multiple warp markers and affect them all by selecting one, hitting the shift key, selecting another. Then if you hold down the alt key, you can move all of those at the same time. You could also do this by hitting command A to select all your warp markers and then holding down the alt key and moving to fine tune. 
Ableton is able to warp multiple tracks at the same time if it thinks that it's from the same song. For example, if you've recorded as a band and you've got uh, several instruments and then you want to dial everything in and warp all the tracks at the same time to a certain tempo, you simply make sure that all your tracks are highlighted and consolidate them so that it creates the same length for all of them unless they already have the same length. In this case what I'll do is I'll duplicate the same file just to show you how this works. So what you do is you would select last the track that you actually want to warp. Usually that's going to be something that has drums in it. You hold shift and grab both those tracks. Down here you see you've got this little striped deal here. That means that you're warping multiple tracks. Now you can go ahead and warp as usual uh, but you lose the ability to have a lot of your right click functions so you're going to have to warp manually. When you finish warping and hit save it will put the warp files on both tracks. If you're a DJ and want to cue your tracks you can simply do that by selecting a, a different cue out than the master. Since I just have stereo out I'll just separate left and right just to show you. So now we have cue out on two and in this area here on the master click where it says solo and now it says cue. Now if you come over here you'll now notice that all your tracks have a little headphone icon. Now you can play the track, turn the headphones on, and as long as your headphones are connected to this output, you will be able to hear any track that you select. When in cue mode, this right here becomes your cue volume. If you'd like to create cue points for your songs, so you can jump from different sections of the song very easily, the solution is to duplicate by hitting Command D for as many of the different cue points that you would like. Then you could simply go to each one and set the start point arrow to different locations in your song. Like this. Then when you're playing your song, you can jump right into the next part. All these can be highlighted, dragged into your browser, and saved. Then you can always drag them all in at the same time. Consolidating a track is a great way to save multiple edits as one file. This can be done simply by hitting Command J, and that becomes one file. Whereas cut, copy, and pasting one file is obviously only going to affect the one file that you're pasting, you could also do that with time, which means that what you're doing is affecting the whole song. In other words, if I select this section here and I want to cut that section out, it will cut that, this whole section out of the, the whole song. In general, if you add the shift key to the editing command, it will apply that to the whole track. For example, a duplication of this section here would be command shift D. Now as you can see it makes space in that whole section there. If you'd like to copy time there's a little trick that you need to know in order to do it. Highlight the section that you want to copy. Hit command shift X and cut that part. Now hit command Z to undo it and then hit Command Shift V and it will copy that whole section. In Ableton, grouping is a very powerful thing that you can do and it's very easy to do. That allows you to control, for example, multiple tracks with one volume or what have you. So you would highlight the tracks that you want to group. Let's say we want to group all these. Just hit the Shift key and that'll highlight all those and then hit Command G. Now these are all in a group. So if we jump over to our session view, we've got our group here. We could actually control the volume of everything with one volume. 
we could also add effects and different things to the whole group. Grouping is also a great uh, thing to do with your synths. You could actually layer multiple synthesizers to all play together at the same time on your MIDI parts. To do that, you just hit Command G and then open this up and this will show you a list of all your different groups. You could use, you could copy this and change slight parameters for each one or you could actually drag in a different synthesizer altogether. And now when you create a part, it's using both sounds. And you could group as, as many things as you would like. Just my suggestion that you uh, keep an eye on your, your low end. You'll probably just want to use one synth for your sub. Grouping also works for effects. You simply hit the Command G on your effect. And now you can have multiple effects chains. A great trick to do is to copy an EQ. I'm going to use the EQ3 and create a different frequency for each one. So by removing different frequencies, now I have a low, mid, and high section. Now I can come in and add different effects to each frequency. For example, I might want to add a little saturation to my low end. I might want to add a delay to the top end or to the mid middle section. And perhaps a reverb on the top section. And now I can use all of these at the same time, creating different effects chains as complex as I would like for all the different frequencies. You can also use grouping to create chains, which is really great for effects or instruments. So you can have many different instruments and each one can have a different sound. So let me just drag a different preset to each of the instances of the synth. And it doesn't have to be all the same synth. Now what you can do is create what's called a chain. So I'm going to highlight all of these here, which are a little tricky to see. Drag them all across. Right click and distribute equally. And now what I can do is I can assign a knob to this right here. This is my little chain, okay? So I'll go to MIDI, click on this, assign it to a knob, turn it off, and now what will happen is when I play this MIDI part, I can switch the sound. So this is a great way to save your presets and then when you're quickly trying to get to your certain sounds, for example, you can make all your favorite bass sounds and then use a selector in order to quickly get the right bass sound for the song that you're trying to create. A great way to get uh, a more random sound or, or to add a slight groove to your audio parts is to simply drag in a groove from your Ableton library. And you could set your timing to zero, doesn't matter what you pull in, and just set your percentage to random. And that way the notes that hit are going to hit slightly differently each time. So if I play this track, you can go ahead and drag this groove to your MIDI part. And then you can turn up the random until you're happy with it. Usually just a few percent is great. It's always a good idea to group your bass instrument so that you can separate the subs from the rest of the frequencies. So once you've got a basic sound, you can highlight those parts, Command G for grouping, duplicate that part, and now we're going to change the, the second part. So the, this main part here, 
we're going to add an EQ. Well, well, we'll add an EQ3. And we'll get rid of the low end. And then on this one here, we'll grab an EQ3. And get rid of the mids and highs. Also going to get rid of the saturation here. And on this copy here, we're just going to have one oscillator and we're going to make that oscillator a sine wave. And we'll solo that. Great, so now we got a, a nice little sub bottom end. Now we're going to on this one drop the volume all the way down and then kind of mix it back in until it sounds good to us. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do a reverse reverb on this little audio track here. Just that there, we'll make that have a reverse reverb effect. So first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you've dropped a reverb into the track and you could set the decay time to whatever works for you. What I'm going to do here is consolidate. So I've only got this one part here and then I'm going to reverse it by hitting the reverse here. Great. Now what I'm going to do is I've got a another audio track here and I'm going to grab the audio from audio 5 to this track here and I will set the input and record this That way it records it with the reverb. Now let me solo this. Now what I'm going to do with this one is reverse it again. We can line it up with this by reversing this again. We'll just... There we go. About like that. there's your reverse reverb. If you want more control out of your samples in Impulse, simply create new tracks, command T for each audio track, for each part that you want to separate. In your in out section, you're going to choose the Impulse or whatever the name of your track is, and the separate instrument. In this case I'll do the snare here, and in this one, grab the Impulse and the hi-hat. Then you hit your monitor ends. In this case I'm going to grab solo. And then you could add any effects that you'd like to each, uh, each of your separate parts. Macros allow you to assign multiple functions to one knob. So for example we could right click and assign all four of these to one knob and you can see they all move. And then you could further edit the way they move, the start point and end points up here in your MIDI map section. To easily record from session window to arrange window, you simply hit the record button here, launch your clip or clips, and it will display everything on the other side like so. And then when you switch over, Everything that you've done, all the parts you've played, and the automation is all recorded in here for further editing. In Ableton you can make a sustaining loop, in other words a loop that carries over past the loop points. 
So say you have this loop here, for example. Maybe we want this extended part or the sustained part to carry over through the whole thing. What I would recommend is create a loop point. This way you can actually hit that first note, which you won't be able to do if you just start right here. Create a loop point and you got to make sure that the note on either side is carried past the loop point and then it'll know that you want to sustain that loop. So it'll sound something like this. And if you want to indefinitely sustain one note, you could just simply put the loop point on that note and make sure that parts of that note are sticking outside of the loop point. A dummy clip allows you to send a regular part through another track and automate different effects. So the way that's done is you would simply record yourself a blank audio track. So in this case I will just go ahead and hit record, play, stop. Okay, great. Once you have that, you just set the length of the clip that you want as a loop. And then from there, you duplicate this blank clip by hitting Command D, or as many dummy clips as you want. And that's what I've done here. Then you drag in the effects that you want, and you create automation on each track. So on this one here, I've drawn this in on saturation, so it gives it some distortion in different parts. On here, I've done some uh, flange automation. And on this clip, I've done some vocoder automation with this here. And then I created a dry so that you could always go back to the original sound. So now what you want to do is just simply send the audio to your dummy track. And on the dummy track, you want to grab your audio from whichever track you want to affect. And make sure your monitor is turned to in. And the monitor on this one is going to be turned to off because you don't want this original signal mixing with this. So now we got our dry signal here, so I'll play my part. And now what I'll do is I'll jump through the dummy clips and it'll uh, affect each of the parts with the automation. And back to dry. All right, so the basis of creating a kick drum in Operator is to click over here choose this here so this way it's four separate oscillators they're not being affected by each other we'll go ahead and turn off the other oscillators here make sure a sine wave is chosen and we've made a little kick MIDI file so I'll play that turn up the volume here and we'll set the envelope We're going to set a fixed frequency. That sounds about right. Now we'll turn on the pitch envelope. Spike that all the way up. Pop that all the way up. Back it down.
Now you can reduce this if you want a darker sounding kick. And then you can change the frequency. You could also consider adding a second sine wave at a harmonizing frequency to create a little bit more powerful kick. But that's the basic idea of making a kick drum with operator. This is less of an Ableton tip and more of just an overall tip. It's a good idea to remove below 120 hertz on any instrument that is not a sub bass or a kick drum. Back into MIDI, selecting a note or a collection of notes hitting shift in the up arrow, jumps it up an octave, or down arrow, jumps it down an octave. Shift and tab switches between the effects and the clip properties. Double click clicking when you see this zoom icon will take you from a zoomed position back to full view of a whole song, or if you have a selection, double-clicking will enlarge that selection. That also works in the arrangement window. And if we have nothing selected, it shows the whole arrangement. In MIDI, same thing. We're focused in on one part. Double-click brings everything back into focus. Hitting the spacebar will s start your song from wherever the cursor is. Hitting it again will stop it. Hitting it a third time will start it back from where the cursor is. If you hold down the shift key, it will continue from where it left off. Without the shift key, it starts from the beginning every time. With the shift key, it continues. If you select an area on a MIDI track and use Command Shift M, that will create a new MIDI clip that you can then edit. Holding down the Alt key, click on any of the tracks, it will expand them all, click again, compress all the tracks. Command Alt T creates another return track. Holding the shift key while clicking and dragging across your automation will delete your elbows. By, by assigning keys on your keyboard or from a controller to your looping, setting one clip will affect all clips. I'll show you how that works. I'm going to assign the loop button to three, set this to one, and this to two. So one starts my loop, two sets the end of the loop, and three gets me out of the loop. Now if I play this track, I can start the loop, end the loop, exit the loop. And then while this track is playing, if I begin playing another track, I can start the loop, end the loop, and get out of the loop. This also works the same way for transpose. You assign transpose on one clip, it will work for all clips. If you select multiple clips, you can assign certain functions all at once. For example, you can save all, all of your settings for all the clips. You can change the warp setting. You can turn loop on or off. You can transpose. Anything that's highlighted, you can change everything to high Q. You can turn warp on and off. If you prefer to zoom from your keyboard, simply hit Shift plus, and that will zoom in. And the minus key will zoom out. That also works on the range window. Zoom in minus key, 
zooms out. Shift question mark will bring up the information area down here. Then anything that you highlight, it will explain. Command Alt B will show or hide your browser. Command Alt O will show or hide your overview, which is up here. Command Alt I will show and hide your in and out selection, easier seen in this area here. Command Alt S will show and hide your sends. And returns are Control Alt R. Control Alt M will hide your mixer. Over here, Command Shift F will switch to your search. Command R will allow you to rename your track. Hitting Tab will move to the next track. If you hit Command and then drag, it will give you more fine tuned results. As you can see down here, it's going by the tenth of the dB. Whereas without it, it jumps much more quickly. This is the same with any parameter. Also works with envelopes. Holding down command, you can fine tune your movement. Command arrow up or arrow down will extend your loop length. With a note selected, if you hit command arrow up on your MIDI part, it will jump to the next MIDI note. Arrow down will go to the previous MIDI note. Command N enters MIDI map mode. If you highlight a group of MIDI notes, Command U will quantize them. Hitting Command Shift U will give you quantize options. You can select a MIDI note or notes and then Command Drag. So click and drag. That will adjust the velocity of those notes. You'll see all those velocities go down. When editing volumes with envelopes, it's a good idea to use a utility in the track and edit that for your volume. That way you can make final adjustments in your mix with your actual volumes here. If you like to put side chain effects on many of your tracks, it's a good idea to create one side chain track with the side chain effect getting the audio from whatever track is triggering, uh, usually kick drums or unless you're doing something more creative. And then simply sending each of your audio tracks that you want to sidechain just straight to the sidechain track. Put your monitor in and send the audio out to master. That way all these tracks will have the sidechain effect without you having to use more than one compressor. And there's a hundred or so Ableton tips for you. I hope you enjoyed this.